This fight has wind and poison everywhere, and this Robo Brood fight has giant piranha plants. Today, we're making hard, customized brutal fights in Mario Odyssey to prove to Timmy Thompson that my bosses don't suck. I immediately started collecting my best ideas for things I could add to these fights, and when I had my list ready to go, I realized something. I've actually never edited a 3D Mario game before. So I called expert Manx Ninja Pig, who filled my brain with delicious knowledge, and then got started on a Topper fight. I used the Dark Side fight as the basis for Topper, and then customized his arena. I stole the floor from the Cloud Kingdom, and placed it around the arena to add a cloud theme to this battle. I also tried to cover the ground with this cloudy fog that Mario can run through, or throw Cappy through to see a bit better, but ended up making everything way too hard to see. After adjusting the fog to the perfect height and adding in these circular laser launchers, I was ready to try it out. Fighting Topper actually turned out to be way harder than I first thought. Every time Mario throws Cappy out, he might activate these laser discs, which continue to trigger for the entire fight. After several attempts and a few close calls, I took down Topper and was ready to move on. Madam Brood is the fight I tackled next. I wanted to have two Madam Broods in the fight, with one being half the size to see how that would work. As you'll see soon, the results were hilarious. Madame Brood has her gold chain chompykins, so I wanted to experiment with having small chain chomps in the arena attacking Mario as well. When I fought the twin bosses, the game glitched out and a larger Madame Brood got stuck like this. Even after beating the small Madame Brood, we got this glorious shot of the glitch during the cutscene. I knew Timmy Thompson would make fun of me if I left the fight like this, so I decided to fix it up. I got rid of the second Madame Brood and doubled down on the little chomplets. I put them all around the perimeter of the arena and went into the fight. This battle was tough because Mario needs to avoid the chomplets behind him while working to capture chompakins. When Mario captures the gold chain chomp, the chomplets can still attack him and actually break him out of the capture. Even running away from Madame Brood was tough because the arena has so many hazards I could bump into. This fight ended up being really fun and unique, and I was super excited to move on to the next one. I was feeling super confident now with two bosses under my belt and wanted to work on the Spewart fight next. I had an awesome idea to bring in quicksand from the desert world and add the desert ground around the arena for theming, but my game kept crashing. I got rid of the quicksand to hopefully fix the problem, brought in some cacti, laser rings, but the game crashed continually. After two hours of trying different solutions, I was ready to give up. Maybe Timmy Thompson was right. Maybe this is too challenging for me. After taking a break, I knew that I couldn't let Timmy Thompson be right. I pushed myself to come up with a completely new concept for the Spewart fight. I brought in snow to place around the arena and wanted some wind to push Mario into the grape jelly that Spewart vomits. So I found some Typhoos to place on both sides. I had an idea to use breakable icicles as obstacles to make Spewart more unpredictable when he's in his poison hat form. The fight was challenging and less predictable, which made it so much more fun. Take that, Timmy. It's time for the Rango fight. I love Mario bosses and levels that give you something that is supposed to be helpful, but actually works against you. I grabbed speed flowers from the Seaside Kingdom and the ground from the Seaside Kingdom for theming. I really struggled with getting these flowers to actually attach to the ground instead of floating in the air, but after 30 minutes of trying, you can see that I still didn't quite get it right. When Mario enters the fight, the flowers all over the arena make it really tough for him to defend himself against the Sawblade hats. Whenever he accidentally grabs a speed flower because he throws Cappy out, he runs uncontrollably around the small arena and gets damaged. Even when Rango is in jumping hat form, the speed flower isn't even that helpful. Rango can just jump further and still hunt down Mario. This fight was a really fun way to do something unexpected, and while it's been the most simple of the fight so far, I needed to save my best ideas for Robo Brood at the end. Harriet has bombs that leave fire spots on the ground in her fight, so I wanted to build on top of that idea. I took the lava floor from the Luncheon Kingdom and found some lava geysers that move up and down and put those into the arena. This synergy was really fun because Mario needs to avoid the giant lava geysers, but because they move up and down, he can jump over them if he times it right. Because Harriet is immune to these lava geysers, she actually can stand on top of them and hurl bombs down at Mario. With some strategic jumps and dodges, Mario crushed Harriet, and we were ready to design the final battle. The Robo Brood fight needed to be epic. I wanted to build around the wooden vibe of this contraption, so I stole the ground and some trees from the Wooded Kingdom. I envisioned piranha plants spitting out poison everywhere, making things crazy, but I couldn't figure out how to make the poison stay on the ground. So I just made three huge piranha plants in the arena instead. 
I really liked the idea of having these spinny rock smashers in the center of the arena to mess with Mario while he went after the Robo Giant. And after trying 50 different things and failing, I was finally able to make one giant roller smasher for our fight. To make Mario have to work a bit harder, I deleted all the Hammer Bros from the stage and brought in these falling platforms for him to jump up to get on top of the beast. Mario needs to avoid these bombs launching, climb up, jump across, and ground pound these shielded brutals to do some damage. Mario calculated his ground pound position to defeat not only this Robo Brood, but also defeating the true final boss, Timmy Thompson, once and for all. Huge thank you to Manx Ninja Pig for helping me learn how to do all this. Be sure to check out his channel if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel so Nintendo will hire me. To see some cool secrets I designed in Mario Maker 2 levels, click on the video on the screen right now. I'm Aristotle, and thanks for watching.